Truth of what happens is, as children grow up, we start to educate them progressively from the waist up. And then we focus on their heads and slightly to one side. I was thinking the old days, you were better off. Because nowadays they're all specialists. Everyone's becoming better and better. And less and less. And eventually someone's going to be superb. Like nothing. Our education system has mined our minds in the way that we strip mined the earth for a particular commodity. And for the future, it won't serve us. We have to rethink the fundamental principles on which we're educating our children. We're not here to tell everybody that they're wrong and we're right. We're not saying that we have all the answers, but um, we'd like to present a different way of looking at it. Mr. Chu, the majority of Western schools come to China, offer a Western-style education with Chinese methods, including language. It's a strategy that seems to be working. Now, just this is obviously not your type of school because you're a Chinese-founded school mm -hmm. and you're adding some international characteristics to it. But also in this game now we have, which I have experience in, a Western school coming over and wanting to take advantage of this growing marketplace with a very young population. Yeah. And so what they do is they, they come in and they create, again, a bilingual type strategy, mm -hmm. but coming at it a little bit from a different angle. So as I said, 70-30, more towards the, the British way. Mm -hmm. And again, what's better? I guess time will tell. Yes, time will tell. Uh, and another is the audience. You need to think about the audience. I believe the 70 per 70, uh, 30 percent that will work for the students who are able to listen to English. Mm -hmm. So a lot of students, and then one, especially in the new school, they need students. So to just to recruit the students who are not able to um, complete their curriculum. That's the problem. That's a bad idea, isn't it? Yes, that's a very bad idea. So for our school, that's how mm, who is your target students, yeah. right? If the 70, 30% uh, that's ratio of school, their target should be the students can speak English. A very good level. Very yeah. good. And they can listen, they can learn math, those kind of very abstractive, yeah. and then com the academic stuff in English, right? If the students could not speak English well, and you force them to listen to English, I think we're wasting the children's time at, on math. But maybe, maybe they think, okay, um, this is good for them to learn English. But it's math class. Mm. We could not slow down the students, their academic progress. Yeah. So that's why our school is still bilingual, but uh, we the bilingual, uh, the English in our school will be English, and then we have unit of inquiry, and then PE, arts, drama, and music. Mm -hmm. Those kind of is, um, they can explode um, things. There is not very clear standards like math. They're very clear standards. You have to pass this level according to the national curriculum. Yeah. So otherwise, the students have no chance to transfer to other school because in this particular school slow them down mm. right yeah and i just think to myself what would i be if i was chucked into a classroom where i didn't understand anything that was being said yeah and it uh, and just destroy I don't know their how, confidence well that that is one element of it isn't there so yeah that's a it's a, a real challenge and i can't say i you know i have seen that and i and i, I do feel for that as well um, and a lot of students they are very fragile now and they if they can't listen to they will think they're stupid mm -hmm. and they destroy their confidence and if they slow down they have they also always have their other friends and the other friends get like 90 mm -hmm. out of 100 on their exam they only get 70 or 80 they, they will feel am I am I bad right? mm -hmm. they will question themselves um, Cool, I've got to read this. Apparently, um, a director at a school, a bilingual education institution in Beijing, mm -hmm. it offers various subjects to Chinese students, said, mm -hmm. uh, when the Chinese uh, education methodology meets the Western style, 
there are usually uh, conflicts. Um, mm. I think conflicts can be positive, though, yeah. um, through, um, through differences in opinion. We can come to new ways of thinking. Chinese teaching is about repetition and exams, it says, while the Western style is about discovery and discussion mm -hmm. and openly looking for the answer rather than having the answer given to you. Um, I got to say, uh, from my knowledge of things the teachers coming over from England, America, it's yeah. a lot of teaching to the exams happening where I come from now. Mm -hmm. We can't just isolate and just say it's happening in China. Yes. Um, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, do you like that rap? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's true. That's true. That's very true. And that's why we will learn from each other's culture and the way of education. Mm. So um, just a, like assessment. So when we come back to say American and uh, British, the way how they can apply their university. Um, England highly depends on how much you get on their, your A-levels. Mm -hmm. American, they branding themselves, don't like, they don't care about the the SAT or some APs. Oh, you can say the Harvard, yeah. Princeton, oh, those successful applicants, they all get almost a full score on their SATs. So SAT and those scores, always important. So, but the Chi in Chinese way, we say that we just as put it too happy. They thought the assessment will be the only thing they need to do. So that is not wrong mm -hmm. because the culture and the situation of the country, a lot of population, they, all, they have to have something to select it mm -hmm. in uh, the people, right? So by now, about discussions, shared opinions, critical thinking, and then, uh, in, innovative, those things is the Chinese education should learn. And I think Chinese education field the experts or the, the minister they already say that they, they know it mm. so uh, the new Chinese national standards will publish the soon uh, maybe next year so uh, they will talk about how say how, how to do cross disciplinary education how to make the connection from the knowledge to the to the real world um, that will be a big topic in the new national it's coming uh, is this probably going to come out next year right yes in 2022 yes um, when was the last, when were they last redone, these national standards? We're we talking mm. many years ago or? I think 2003. Okay, so, so this is big, yeah? This is going to be a whole new, yeah. your job's going to get very challenging, isn't it, when, yeah. they, when they drop? But when, when we look at the 2003 national curriculum, yeah. they still encourage like, thinking, yeah. discussion about the things. Just how the school implement them, it. The, the curriculum, the national curriculum, is encouraged a lot. How it's interpreted. Yes. And then how, how the reality. If yeah. they're still using standardized tests to select the students who can go to college, mm -hmm. it will not change much. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Beijing is very far away from yeah. Zhuhai. And pay. so when the, the message comes, it can be rather cloudy, yeah. can't it? But now educational policy will implement strongly and then not will be reduced yeah. the power that, that that i absolutely agree with that one yes um i can see that very much being the case uh, and, and there's a good thing for yeah. the classroom um here's a good example just going back to the maths mm. this same guy goes when teaching a maths problem he would sometimes encourage his students to explore different answers mm. um, only to be told by some of them that their chinese teacher already told them one fixed answer he said situations like these might make the learning process more difficult for the students who are handling two sets of ideas at the same time. Now, again, this is like looking at this bottle and saying, OK, it's a Sabon water bottle. Wonderful. But again, looking at it from different angles, although that's right, what else could we possibly say about this? And I wonder, as this maths example shows, does this not move into this very st stereotypical idea that a Chinese student and the way they learn in China pulls down that creative kind of way of looking at things from different ways. Mm -hmm. um, just like you did with the analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, you broke it apart and said, well, look, good analogy. I have another one. Yeah. Um, 
I just wonder again, is that really the truth? Do we really think that's happening? Is China really, really that uncreative? Is there really no discussion going on um, in classrooms? Mm. Okay. Um, it's, uh, this quotation is not nonsense. This is the first thing I say. And the second, I will say, it's not hard, severe, yeah. like what he, the quotation says. Um, I want to listen to a lot of good teachers. We have like excellent teachers uh, in the cities, in the country-wise. Uh, when I listen to them, they always encourage the students uh, think the question in a different way, to mm -hmm. answer it from different angles. They always to do that. That's the why they are good. Mm -hmm. And then in some very simple teacher, or not simple, uh, first a tier or for, for, not tier, first a from, uh, from from mine, from mine, like new teachers or new teachers or some rural area teachers. Okay, yeah. With the teachers not educated very much, they prefer to one fixed uh, answer. A standardized teacher. <laughs> yeah, yes, 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 you're right. The standardized The standardized teacher. exams. Yeah. Yes, because how the teacher gets evaluated is standardized test. And that's, that, that's the problem with the system, isn't it? It's, yes. Who could and fault them for it, really? Yeah, and then the teachers also, maybe because their own academic level is not that high, they don't have the ability to guide mm -hmm. the students, but they have to ensure, assure, all the students can get a question right. Mm -hmm. Nothing goes wrong. So easy things is one answer. Yes, indeed. Right? Yeah. They would say, okay, you can think the different way, how we manage it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the good teacher have the able to manage the different answer and get able to explain why and guide it to the correct path. So they can do that. But some standardized teacher or um, the factory teacher, the factory teacher, yeah. they can only do one thing, make sh so that he will not or she will not make anything wrong. Yeah, I totally get it. R really good points there. That word you use, you know, how how do you manage more than one answer? You know, there's yeah. big countries, a lot of people. We've got to sort them out somehow. And I think not just China, but I think we're going to realize worldwide soon that we can't manage it. Yeah. And sometimes we might need to think, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe what we need to do is we need to manage to make sure that these children growing up manage themselves. Mm -hmm. And they don't need to have always this big controlling eye. You go back to Big Brother 1984. Mm -hmm. 1984 could be rewritten and said 2021, couldn't <laughs> it? That's, uh, you know, but we, we, won't, we won't get into that. Um, but totally get where you're coming from. But maybe in the pursuit of creativity and really becoming who human beings really are, which is magnificent creativity, mm -hmm. um, that we might need to get off this trying of controlling and managing and always looking at it through data, yeah. which has become massive, isn't it, now, data? That's a whole other subject. Yeah. Um, to encourage, encourage a student's creativity, that is, depends on their teachers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think teachers should be, have the awareness that Making wrong is not an issue. Yeah, that's how people learn. Good point. Yeah, and then in the Yangwen school, we, we borrow. There is a, a expert is a math teacher, a uh, mm -hmm. from Beijing, and then his on um, is his philosophy called Hua Cuo Jiao Yu, means um, uh, you educate the children through the problems, through the wrongness. Um, yeah, so don't, if the student gets something wrong, they, you shouldn't say, oh, it's wrong, what is right? Mm -hmm. You just uh, explain and listen to them, why do you think, why are you thinking that way? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, okay, can we think in the other way? Just like, not a um, white and black. Yeah. You just say, white, okay, why do you think the white? Is there any thoughts? Um, the student may say, okay, maybe gray, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The challenge is, though, like you say, all that very well, like it a lot, but if that teacher gets X amount of R&B a month mm -hmm. because of the children getting X percent in their exam, they ain't going to sit down and talk about gray, are they? 
Yeah. They're going to say, right, that's black, this is white, right, move on, next. <laughs> <laughs> that's, exactly, yeah, you're, yeah. Right. Okay. you're right. But none of that's going to be happening in your school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will not. Because we, we give a lot of money okay. to teachers. And then, do you find that around the world, China provides the better salary, social status, and then uh, living environment respect for t- for teachers. to teachers yeah. very well. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. Why, why do you think we're here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so even this, the best, uh, not best, um, on the labor market, mm-hmm. the, on the top of the labor market, the mm. people still not willing to do teachers. Mm. Even, even here. How in America, I think people willing to do finance, banking, and there's mm. nothing they can choose. They may choose to do teacher, mm. but teacher pay very less. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's a really stressful job. Very stressful. In England, they actually have a teacher's hotline um, for if you need to speak to someone. You know, oh, cause, uh, counseling? Counsel, yeah, kind of. You need someone to speak to, um, uh, non-judgmental. Uh, it, again, another story, which <laughs> we're going to veer away from, from now. But look, regulations. Mm-hmm. You, it's very strict um, in your bilingual school. You have to follow certain things um, from the ages of 6 to 15 years old. The Chinese children or international children who are in your school has to follow uh, compulsory years from grades um, 1 to 9. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, let's be, be, be very d- down about this. Uh, notably, this has to be in Chinese, uh, history, uh, geography... Um, well, mathematics doesn't necessarily have to be, but there is a all the core compulsory focus. education courses should be offered, and then they doesn't in. Um, I think there's there's no policy indicates we they have to uh, taught in which language. No, yeah. but but there is history and geography and morals have to be in Chinese. That's what I've been told. Uh, math, no policy says that. Really? Because no policy says you should say uh, taught in Chinese or English because they're in the national compulsory education there's no English taught subject except, uh, mm-hmm. except, mm-hmm. except uh, Chinese, English. English yeah. So the policy does say that. So bilingual school, why do that? How a international teacher to teach Chinese history? That would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I because mean, the history, of course, would be Chinese. It's it's not you know like we have social studies, cultural studies. We yeah. talk about countries and mm-hmm. history from different perspectives. Yeah. Um, but you're right there. I see the challenge now. Geography, on the other hand, I mean, uh, we could come in as a as a foreigner and we could have a look at your national curriculum in geography. And but again, I don't see that. It always seems to be the core: English, science, and maths. Not in your case, of course, you're doing in Chinese, but. The geography, the morals, the history Ge- is... Geography in Chinese textbook, it doesn't always geography. There's some cultural stuff. Yeah. And then how the people, uh, the living style as well. So it's not easy for a foreigner to do that, to explain. As a foreigner, I tell Chinese t- students what is Chinese culture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, for many years, I've been digging in China to Chinese sheets. So what well, actually do you teach in morals and geography? And of course, everyone's too busy. They don't want to talk to Chris, but um, maybe one day I'll get to know about it. it. It seems to be this kind of, I don't know, this cupboard where things are kept and the Chinese teachers deal with it. I almost wonder, are you hiding something, you know, special or magical or, or maybe the other way around? I don't know, Mr. Chu, but the regulations, they are a challenge, are they not? Yes. The, I think the, the regulations... Now is a challenge for all private schools, not only bilingual schools, mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. private schools. Um, before like 2015, before 2015, and then some private school can have more flexibility on their curriculum. But after that, and especially after um, September this year, and then the new Min Ba like a law about private or um, private education will be get effect. Private English schools, for example, Not as well. English, it's been all the schools. Yeah, all private schools. A lot. It has. It's been becoming much more strict. Yeah, yes. in terms of what exactly are you teaching? 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. So in Hong Chen Yang School, in our school, uh, we follow the re, uh, regulation fully. So all those uh, compulsory education courses will be taught in Chinese. But that's not your. You can. You don't have to choose to teach it in Chinese. You do. You oh, you actually have to. Yes. I think because. Uh, yeah, once they have to, the law doesn't indicate that. But how the local bureau interpreted that? Oh, they interpreted it. Again, like we were saying earlier, that it should be compulsory in Chinese, right? Yes. Um, how, how can I make it more clear? Because um, we... that doesn't mean you. Nobody tell you yeah. what you should to do. So most of the people choose a conservative. Yes. Matter. Could we say it's rather grey? Uh, grey area? Yeah. 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 Will be. We'll stick to the grey. Let's be creative. Not, not grey, just how the local bureau interpret that. We just follow the um, instruction from the local bureau. And as a new school in a new area, um, I mean, the EDB, the local education bureau, mm -hmm. it doesn't just affect Hunchin, it's all over Juhai, right? No, Hunchin. They have their own, their so own they program. have their own separate one. Yeah. Okay, wow. but that, and again, that brings a whole new set of challenges to where you are here, where we are now. We're yeah. not in that um, mm -hmm. district. Mm -hmm. So, my gosh, um, it's a challenge. Uh, we're not know what happened, but uh, we, the school, choose the um, the conservative method, and then we offer the compulsory education courses mm -hmm. in Chinese. Yeah. Are you going to be doing the John Cow and the Gao Cow, your students? Will they have the choice? How that, how's that going to work, Mr. Chi? John Cow being the kind of middle school, national exam, yeah. the Gao Cow, the high school one. Mm -hmm. um, let's say John Cow first. Okay. So the John Cow, the students, when they go to the grade nine, the last year in the middle school, mm -hmm. they choose um, whether you want to go um, Chinese national curriculum high school or you're thinking about to go to international high school. You can choose different classes. But all the students will take the Zhong Kao. Okay. Uh, Zhong Kao now are sort of like graduate exam. Mm -hmm. So the, Zhong, the high score, the Zhong Kao classes, they need the score to apply for the, a good high school. But in an international pathway, Court classes, they doesn't need to go to a score to mm -hmm. go to international high school, but they will take the exam. Yeah? That's yeah. the only difference. Is one they all take the exam. One is need a score to go to the high further education. One doesn't. Yeah. And I, I think you're well placed because your school, your campus, will have the ability when they do the John Cow to then say, hey. With obviously with the parents to make the choice, will they either go the international route and go into like Dulwich College, yes. Dulwich, or will they go the Chinese route and go into the, the Chinese high school, which, yes. al which also you have yes. on the same campus, right? In, on the same campus. So it's like two doors with like one country, two systems. <laughs> <laughs> Just a one door. Yeah. Only one, one door. door. Two, two buildings. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, um, and, and then if they go into the door where it's the Chinese curriculum again for high school, then they'll go on and do the Gao Kao mm. Chinese University. If yes. they don't go the Chinese way, they go into Dulwich, they'll do GCSEs, British A-levels, and then they'll go abroad yeah. Um, somewhere, yeah? Okay. For the Gao Kao side, we also offer like arts and the sports um, route. Um, they have specialized in, for uh, the drawing or music so that they can require the less on the Gaokao score. Um, and also we offer, we're planning to offer the DSE, the Hong Kong Diploma of Secondary Education. Mm -hmm. And this program allow the Hong Kong students to apply Chinese mainland university, Hong Kong, Macau, and overseas university as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. new route, new yeah. portal. Um, is that new, by the way, this idea of taking a, say, more artsy, art, music, um, sport, and then that can actually be put towards your Gao Kao score? Is that a new thing? Kind of uh, like it's a... not new, it's always there. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know about that. For example, if you need 100, uh, 550 
uh, on their Gaokao to go to Jinan Dashu, mm-hmm. like a university in Guangzhou. Mm-hmm. And if I am arts or sports students, I can won my major score the past the line. I only need like 350 maybe. Because you've got that skill that you can bring to the school in music yeah. or something like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that happened to a very small percent of Chinese students? Yeah, a small percent. Are you looking to further your career in education? Teach Now offers a convenient online teacher preparation and master's degree program completed anywhere in the world. Reach Now for Teach Now. Ain't no time for defeat now. Teachers get off your seats now. Future generations need you now. Work with people all over the world in a collaborative, activity-based teaching environment. To learn more, visit teach-now.edu. Expertise that is really outside of the box. Now, Mr. Chu, you look like you're falling asleep. No, absolutely you're not. Um, I know I'm keeping you. But let's just uh, move on. Meeting market needs. So we've got very, very, um, how do you say, invested parents in China. Mm. Uh, much more so, I think, than in England and America. Uh, Mum or dad is around a lot and very interested in what the children are studying and also why I'm maybe spending a lot of money for this bilingual education. Mm. So for all the reasons we've talked about with these international Chinese private schools, parents expect that teachers delivering the learning to have good skills and experiences. Um, so there's a demand, is there not, for a high proportion of foreigners, native English-speaking teachers, at your Chinese international-style mm-hmm. private schools. Now, not just good teachers, but teachers who can deliver a blended dual curriculum with mm-hmm. sufficient expertise in Western-informed pedagogy. We're talking about things like inquiry-led, student-led, uh, the good old collaborative learning. Um, this is apparently an important characteristic of the best premium schools. Uh, now, the issue is with COVID and this whole pandemic, it's more difficult now, is it not, to get good qualified teachers in to fill these positions and the high expectations of... You're right, you're right. How Um, are you working on that? How, yeah, how's that been for you? And this year I need 14 expat teachers. So at the beginning I get all of them and then recent the two weeks, four or three, three of them, decided not to come because mm-hmm. all the, all the, those bilingual schools are looking for teachers inside in China so they just compete each other so now it's becoming a, a betting match isn't it yeah. these teachers are thinking look you pay me this okay now you pay me that that's what I'm hearing from speaking to leaders not yeah. a good position right yeah 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 so this gave me a lot of challenge but uh, um, our school didn't really raise the salary because of that. Mm-hmm. So because we don't want to hurt the old teachers' feeling. Right. Well, yeah, of course, that's something you need to think about. Yeah, I don't. We we don't want to hurt that their feelings. And then another thing is they should say how they they should have reasonable expectations. If the one the border is open, more teachers coming, they will lose their job. Mm-hmm. Right, and because <laughs> they're always finding some you, one, the teacher is looking someone pay more, mm. the teacher looking for someone pay less, right, and then also with some good quality. Um, yeah, it's it's hard. I just to tell them the vision and how the management system in our school with the pro- professional development we can offer. We hopefully, yeah, we do uh, see stay some teachers here um, I, I love their attitude that's a working ethic I mean that's going to be a challenge I, I hope not for the considerable future mm. I hope things do open up again but who, how who do we how do we know what's going on but this is it's certainly a challenge that yes you've just attested to you're having this issue this is um, some research here we like to have a bit of research in these yeah. podcasts. Uh, it says international, the growth of teachers is, is massive. There's more um, supply of these types of schools we're talking about. So there's going to be more demand for bringing these teachers in. It's hard because you can't bring teachers in yes. uh, at the moment. Um, so you have to deal with the ones that are already in here. And they're not stupid. They're wanting to make more money. 
Um, but apparently, uh, around 64,700 teachers are going to be need to be employed at China's international schools in the 2023-24 academic year. Um, at least 37,000 of who will be foreign teachers. Okay, so it's also involving local um, Chinese teachers in that. So 37,000 teachers, of which I'm one of them. Um, it's a it's a lot. Yeah, um, it's a lot. When you think about China's population, it's nothing, but um, it's a lot. And um, listeners, Mr. Chu was wiping his forehead when we started talking about recruitment challenges at the moment. Um, and again, it's finding good teachers, but also keeping them, isn't yes. it, as well? Yeah. And that is hard, however much of a vision you give them, right? That's true, that's true. Um, we do have some disadvantage to keep good teachers like you. Because we could not offer so many free tuition for... Well, it's because I have too many children, isn't it? Yeah, That's for, my problem. For a basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> they could have got a basketball scholarship. You never offered me that. No, you, you, now you have four children? Yeah, I think so. so yeah, and fine. plus you, you may have the one more in the future. But no, no, no. You have like, a no, team. That's, That's you, for you now, you Mr. Chief. You have a basketball team. You take the baton on, yeah. <laughs> How many do you have? Two. One. One, yes. Clever man. Yeah. That's why you're about to become assistant principal. Uh, but yes, it's, it's about trying to keep them, the, the, the retention. And I think it's very difficult. I think another thing with, the, with this whole pandemic is that teachers come over here thinking that they can travel around Asia and see China yeah. and go back to see mum and dad and mm. brothers and sisters once a year. We can't at the moment. Yeah, no, they can't. Very sad. So yes, yeah, it's, it's very sad. And um, as I said, let's fingers crossed that all this madness is pushed away and we can just get on with... Uh... Yeah. And also some teachers that I want to interview and also my friend, teachers of my friends, um, they, perf they have a longer commitment to stay in China now. So they feel safer. Mm -hmm. That's the flip then, side, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and the living, the people are friendly and the living is not expensive. They, when they live there, they feel have more hope mm -hmm. to stay in here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, there with you on that, quality of life. I mean, well, you know, I've been here for quite a while. All my children yeah. are born here. I have a lot to thank um, for your um, lovely country. So, another challenge, and I think you're going to agree with me on this, yeah. is the upskilling of Chinese teachers. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a key to this successful expansion in China of these schools, bilingual schools. How are you going to upskill um, the Chinese teachers? Because... Let's be honest, you can bring in 37,000 foreign teachers, post-pandemic, uh, pre-pandemic, whatever. Mm -hmm. But essentially, the backbone of the success of these bilingual schools is going to be in the local teachers yeah, right. and the local Correct. teachers' talents. You know, I'm not... My vision is big enough to see that. Mm -hmm. And there's a wide range of ones I've worked with over the years. Like there's a wide range of, of foreign teachers. But you alluded it to it earlier as well when you were saying about the homeroom teacher, this idea that comes from very much a Western pedagogy of how to get the Chinese local teachers into understanding that process, that more holistic way. It's a challenge, right? Yes, it's a challenge. That's not the how those teachers grow up and also um, it's not how they get trained at their teacher college. So how are you going to meet this challenge you think moving forward mm -hmm. so now the first day we recruit a lot of stu uh, teachers that study abroad and come back mm -hmm. that's like me and then they know what is homeroom style and then how to do pro project based learning part based learning with a um, conversation style or how to include the students to share your opinion and feel confidence a lot of time the teacher feel should be should feel confidence when the students see some differently mm -hmm. and then that is a key thing that is kind of mindset so that's the one um, students that are brought that's the one solution and the second is uh, to keep giving the professional development sometimes the Chinese teacher local teacher they know how to do they just lack of the awareness and the mindset and then uh, their understanding, lack of their understanding. So when we give some training for those teachers, we use a transformative education, this methodology called transformative, mm -hmm. and more like to change people's behavior. So the from you tell from telling, so mm -hmm. you tell them and they know it. So more like cognitive. 
and the second step is a social emotion, like、uh, more like whether I feel comfortable, whether I feel happy with it, where I feel okay with it, and the fourth step is、um, why、I、really make the the action. I can take the initial and really do it, and the fourth, the behavior changed. So that is、um, cognitive emotion and action. So the three. And then, and so this training happens. It's just a one-off type of training you do, or this is something that goes through the year that your local staff will be involved in. It's a kind of long-term. That's a、mechanism. very very long time,、yeah. long term, because you want to change people's behavior and、yeah. mindset. It's never easy. No, like marriage, you never change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> <Right> ? <laughs> so,、um, but the work, work is not always the person. Work have、um, regulations and 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 evaluation that you do. You just tell them to do, and then when they really do it, they feel okay. Um, I can do it. Just、mm-hmm. a follow.、Mm-hmm. So it's a long term. I think also work with many Chinese, whatever we call them, assistants.、Um, we call that co-teacher.、Here. Co-teacher here, we call them. Um, um,、uh, cripes! I, I, I forgot. It's been a hard year.、Um, practitioners, CPs,、um, clinical practitioners, classroom practitioners. Oh my God! There's a hard name. So many, so many different names,、um, but they're very important and essential in a bilingual environment because, as foreign teachers, we do a lot of us don't have the Mandarin skills to be able to, you know, to、um, to teach in that language. So we need our assistants, our co-teachers, to co-teach sometimes. Of course, there's the the problem there with the role, the delineations. If you're a co-teacher, then does that mean they're teaching? Yeah. There are a、so、lot of ways.、Uh, a lot of the, ways. The co-teaching, the the patrol, or、so. you you just research about that. We have a, a seminar talk about that. And again, like the different bilingual schools, it's the whole the rabbit hole runs very deep. But I would say, looking to the future, as we bring this podcast to an end, Mr. Chu, yeah, is talking about the co-teachers and the difficulty with foreign teachers. We're finding them now, finding good ones. Yeah. Surely the future is to get more and more trained bilingual teachers、mm. from China、mm-hmm. to replace the expensive, moaning, time-consuming, <laughs> and disruptive、uh, foreign teachers. Right?、Uh, there is a trend and a prediction about that, but I don't think so. Because bilin- once you're bilingual teachers, the teachers have the ability to speak Mandarin and English, but the mindset, the way, the culture awareness, and how the people, how the the expat teacher to interact with the students, they are differently.、Um, so they always, one way say we offer bilingual education is not only language, not only knowledge. They also about. Uh, global awareness、mm-hmm. and their international understanding.、Mm-hmm. So those international teachers, they also contribute in this part,、mm-hmm. which、mm-hmm. is cannot be easily replaced by those bilingual teachers. Even by a robot. Even if you got a robot. No robot. A Chris yeah. robot. Yeah. <laughs> <Never> . <laughs> We'd have to program it、yeah. first. But talking about trend,、mm-hmm. from the years I've been coming here and seeing Juhai change. Exponentially, there was a, there is a trend that I saw in the early days when I came here. There are a lot of what I would call foreign businessmen,、uh, corporate on corporate family contracts. So they'd come over here to work for the foreign companies, the MTUs, the EPCOSs, and they'd be on a really nice package. The kids would get schooling.、Um, they'd obviously be the leader in the factory and、um, the, the link with、uh, with their operations at HQs outside of China. But that over the years, the trend has started to decline, and what you see more is now is Chinese middle management, Chinese leaders stepping up now to take those original positions that the expats would come in to do.、Yeah. So I know you alluded to it that you you hear there's rumours that this might happen, and I kind of said it rather tongue in cheek about getting rid of us,、mm-hmm. but I think. You will. Let's look in the future here. The next ten years, twenty years. I think 
you will start to see a decline. Yes, yes. It's only natural, right? Yes, I think it will be natural for the business because the come out the result of the um, the business is earning the money, getting the money, right? Mm -hmm. If the Chinese leadership or managers they already get trained well, they know how to make the money for the company and with less salary package and labor labor cost, mm -hmm. it definitely will change. That's to say the result. How about the school? If the school's result is only language and academic, if this those kind of school, their that is their goal, mm -hmm. they definitely they will choose some more capable uh, bilingual teachers. Mm -hmm. But yeah. some teacher uh, school they may have the vision say, I want our school. Uh, for example, uh, UWC, U United World College. Mm -hmm. They try to create a small UN, so that they will still using the international teachers. You say small UN like the United Nations? Yes. Yes, we've already got one of those. <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting rid of that one. Um, we don't need any more. Uh, so, okay, very good points there, actually, to listen to. Heed Mr. Chu's warnings, uh, listeners, because yes, it does feed into what the actual objective of the business model is all about. We mentioned earlier, bilingual education isn't just something that happens in China. Mm -hmm. no. And in fact, in your experience in America, okay. there's immersive bilingual education happening there and, and also in my country. But America is, as it is for many things, is a leading nation. And so this is one where we look at it, and I've, we've done some research, it's very much, again, the forefront of bilingual education, certainly in the West. 200 schools, apparently, Mr. Chu, are adopting a bilingual approach uh, to education um, from New York all the way over, as I see here, to Kensington um, in London. Uh, they live and breathe Mandarin Chinese. Love this. Um, as well as the many of the cultural norms associated mm -hmm. with language. Maybe they'll be making uh, dumplings and uh, drinking Chinese tea in the afternoon instead of tea and biscuits. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, it's open to, it is free to 11 years old. They do, um, uh, apparently, like you said, the morning time would be English and afternoon would be Chinese yeah. or vice versa. It does say here, Europe is light years behind the United States. When again, what I just said, it comes to bilingual education. So you've seen it. Um, it's happening. Is bilingual education schools, are they the future of primary education? In and outside of China. Uh, outside of China? Yeah. I don't think there will be future, but there will be more. Because um, uh, I think a Western world doesn't really care about foreign language for many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if now, and after that, American, I think UK as well, um, they're thinking about the foreign languages are useful and also the 21st century and then they decided to do something so the American do uh, Spanish French Japanese Chinese and um, yeah those immerse immersion program so just like if you were the head of school or head of education minister you will say oh my education system need to teach foreign language which language you would like to offer mm. Right? You mm -hmm. will think about that. Yeah. I make a, my master dissertation about motivation to learn, Eng uh, learn Chinese in Scotland area. I <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I fell off my seat. Yeah. You don't, no, not many people. I was going to say, yeah, how, and what was the conclusion? <laughs> but there, there is a uh, Confucian Institute and a Confucius classroom in Scotland in Aberdeen. The local authority said, we don't, uh, how's it that? <laughs> we want to have something new. We want the children to experience mm -hmm. the different culture and the language. And then, but we don't have the budget for that. No, oh, there you go. So uh, all those teachers leaving spans or traveling spans in the pay by Chinese government. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I, what I want to say is they're, they're willing to try it. And then I asked them, well, why do you want to try uh, the, for the government authorities, they may think I want to offer something new. 
and then one who, I, but I don't have money. Who can pay for the things? Mm -hmm. I just choose which one. Yeah, that's the government of uh, officials thoughts. Uh, when I talk to the students, some school they offer different languages. They have word language department. Yeah. Um, when they ask why you choose Chinese, why we choose a particular language, um, they some someone will say I choose French or Spanish because it's easy to learn. They all about the letters, and then they will they say I want to learn Chinese because the country is growing. I won't go there. I want to do business. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, turned out the result is eighty percent students. Who want to learn Chinese because Chinese becoming the second biggest economic entity? Well, well, you better get the Confucius Institute over there ASAP to Aberdeen. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a. This they already uh, well, they need to expand. They need to expand. Yeah. Get into these different places. Uh, but that that's interesting. So well, there's no doubt uh, yeah. Mandarin spreading. I did French and German mm -hmm. when I was at school. Yeah, and I wish I had Mandarin there as well so different i think again yeah. going back to that word diversity mm -hmm. i think it's a brilliant thing and i hope more british schools um do adopt it conclusion yeah bilingual students can freely wander between two different languages learning systems and cultures which will ready them to learn more new things quickly and create a global person that will suit in the internationalization wave i think they're a good thing yeah definitely agree this statement yeah okay well one other thing before we leave over the next 15 years mr chu the number of high income residents in top tier cities such as beijing guangzhou shanghai shenzhen is expected to double um, the number of families able to afford the tuition of schools like yours and mine are therefore going to increase rapidly and will continue to do so so for the near future i mean 15 years bar having another pandemic of course um, because we could see one of those come in. The future looks pretty bright for bilingual education and people like yourself, right? Yeah, we can see that. But uh, also the public schools is growing and the taking the space was belong to private schools. So I think the public school also learn from the bilingual education mm. from the experiment they may take the result of the experiment mm -hmm. from the school like uh, us yeah um, and it'll be cheaper yes and I think the public school now I already see some Shenzhen public school offer bilingual education free wow. to a lot of students and then they may not use a lot of like uh, expat teachers they use the bilingual local Chinese so, yeah. teachers so I think the government know that and they um, those bilingual ideas, it, they, they say it. So yeah. I think they were working on that. And then also for the teaching pedagogies, we are using a homeroom discussion, uh, increase students' innovative and the critical thinking ways. They will all spend their money on that. So yeah. the public schools will be the competitor. We are not a competitor. Mm. Yeah. Interesting point that actually. I think the Chinese public school is doing really well and it's changed huge over decades. Uh, mm. For Shenzhen, Beijing and Shanghai, those big cities will first, uh, firstly uh, to offer international characteristics mm. in the public school. Yeah, so, yeah, good point. And international schools as in the schools that can only accept non-Chinese passports. What do we think about the future of them, Mr. Chu? Because, again, if we look 10 years from now, I could see my hand slowly starting to drop. To drop? Um, from what I can see, things are tightening up, becoming more strict. I think there could be these international schools are almost like islands mm -hmm. where they can teach what they yeah. want yeah. and I don't know if that suits the current sentiment of where China's going. What do you think about that? I haven't had any research about that uh, but uh, I think from the demand, I think in future I think there will be more foreigners will come to China for living mm. or work. Mm. Their children need to go to school. 
if they still think they want to keep their home country education, the international school still have market.、Mm. If one day come to China and they think the country's education is okay, is good,、um, I want the children to explore explore the Chinese culture and language. For example, our friend Sana、mm-hmm. would like to have their children in Chinese school. Okay, shout out to Sana on the Chinese education. Yes, absolutely, good point. Yeah. Yeah, I think、um, they will decided to put their children in Chinese.、Um, Mainstream, mainstream Chinese school.、Mm-hmm. Uh, if the public school can offer、um, the same quality like the private school, yeah. So yeah. I think those、um, foreign friends will like to put their children in public school as well. Again, Mr. Chu, some very good points. I have enjoyed our talk today.、Um, before we finish, have you ever seen the BBC TV series? I'm sure some of the listeners would of.、Mm-hmm. Um, it was called "Are Our Kids Tough Enough?" Yeah, I, I watched that. You watched that. Now, I would say anyone who hasn't watched it, please go and watch it because I thought it was quite fascinating.、Mm-hmm. And it, it was about some Chinese leaders came over to England and they had a partnership with a school. I can't remember the school might have been up north. I don't know. And they took over a part of the school, didn't they?、Yeah. Taught in a Chinese way, like the Chinese curriculum, the Chinese style. And then they did their exams after that. So I mean, half of the school carried on normal, doing it the the British way, and then half of the school then took the exams after having the Chinese way.、Mm-hmm. And the conclusions were that the children who were in the Chinese stream got、yes. better, better exam exam results. results, right? But you were left with the dropping conclusion, were we not? That actually there were other things that they didn't get. Maybe that the other stream that weren't in the Chinese system did, and it left me with this kind of thing of, and I think it's where we are in the world today. And I want to end on a positive, is that with bilingual education, it really is about the plan, the experiment, the goal of the experiment is to get those best of both worlds together. Yes. Because that TV series showed us one thing that we can learn from the from the Eastern way of things, and the East can learn from the Western way of things. Would Would you agree with that? Agree, agree. We both should to learn, and then I like your point is the international education to bond the world together.、Mm. Um, from we borrow and learn each other. Yeah, I think because we're also we all nurture the next generation and the future of the world.、Mm. Right? Well, let's hope we do、um, more bonding. And integrating, then separating, right? Yeah. As we move forward, but yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chu. And I hope at some point we can have you on again later on because it's a, an interesting journey you're going to be taking on a new school,、mm-hmm. um, and boy, you're going to have a lot of challenges、um, yes. with the new school. So I hope we can touch base again and go over to see how things are going. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, I think we should keep in touch, and then we share the. Working experience and、uh, our teachers. I think our teachers can can visit each other's school. I think that's a marvelous idea. Yes. So now I think we're even we're in the same area, but uh, uh, we all recruit the, want to recruit the students, but we never be the teacher. The academic world shouldn't be competitors.、Mm-hmm. We also we always work together and offer better education to the children. This is it. Yeah, that's a good mindset to have. Yes, let the marketing people, the mission people, fight themselves. Do all that. Yeah.、And、yes, we、uh, always can work together. <laughs> Lovely. Well, on that note, Mr. Chu, thanks again, and、um, thanks for listening, everyone. This is China Jedi people. If you're an English-speaking teacher from anywhere in the world and you have a bachelor's degree but need an official and accredited teaching license to get a job, get a visa to teach abroad, or most importantly, to learn all those things you wish you knew before you stood in front of 30 plus students, then reach now to Teach Now and secure a professional U.S. District of Columbia license in as little as nine months. Online in no time, low cost, high quality. Teach Now, get in the game. Immediately receive a hundred dollar discount if you have tuition by signing up to the Teach Now program by the link www.teach-now.edu/chinajedi. May the smile be with you.